So this video is about acceptable liquids while you're fasting. I've done other videos about this topic, but I'm always getting new information and updating my videos so you have the current version, okay? So what can you drink while you're fasting? Realize that to get the benefits of fasting, uh, calories do matter. The more calories you have of anything, um, the more problems you're going to have. So let's first talk about what you should be avoiding, okay, while you're doing this. And then we'll talk about what you should be drinking while you're doing fasting, okay? So bone broth. Why shouldn't you consume bone broth while you're fasting? Some people say it's okay. Some people say it's not okay. Well, there's a good amount of protein in there and protein can stimulate insulin, okay? So if you're just drinking a small amount of bone broth, it's probably not gonna be a problem, but realize that there's protein in bone broth that could inhibit the benefits of fasting. So if you're gonna do bone broth, maybe you do it during a meal. I have no problem with bone broth but it can slow down your results. Now, this also goes with collagen powder, okay? Collagen is protein. So again, avoid collagen powder while you're fasting. All right, what about branch chain amino acids, okay? Some people take it before or after a workout. Well, again, we have another protein, okay, powder. It's not all of the amino acids, but it's some, and that can definitely spike your sugar that will give you energy, but they will definitely block you more than even bone broth. What about coconut water? There's a good amount of sugar in coconut water, even though it's not like table sugar. There's still a good amount of sugar in coconut water. I would avoid it. All right, coffee. Okay, let's talk about coffee. Um, black coffee is totally fine. When you start to add things to it, especially if you're doing the sweetened flavored drinks, okay, that's definitely a no. Like even the artificially uh, sweetened creams that they use, right? Now, what about uh, whole cream? Well, whole cream doesn't stimulate insulin, okay? Because the more fat something is, the less insulin that's triggered, but there are calories. So that can bump you out, but only a tiny bit. So I'm just going to put that right in the middle there. So you can do it, but there's going to be some slight decrease in some of the benefits, but I will say it's going to be insignificant if you use a little bit of half and half or cream. In fact, I use cream and I really don't worry about it. So, I mean, this really could be in the yes section, but for those people that want to be very, very strict and you should just do black coffee. Now, when you get half and half, we're adding some more milk. So milk does have some more sugar. If you have the choice between half and half and whole cream, I would have a tendency to do whole cream, okay, instead of half and half. But again, it's a minor point. So if you want to use half and half or cream, go for it. Now, what about bulletproof coffee, okay? That has more calories, more fat, because there's butter and MCT oil. However, because it's fat, it's not going to trigger insulin. But if you are trying to lose weight, okay, and you've done fasting for a period of time, uh, maybe you uh, don't consume the bulletproof version. You just do black coffee because your body is going to go after that fat as its fuel and less of your own fat. However, that being said, if you're trying to maintain your weight, okay, and you don't want to lose anymore, I would highly recommend bulletproof coffee because that helps to satisfy you and it helps you to go longer with your fasting, okay? And then, of course, the longer you go with your fasting, the more you become fat adapted and the easier things will be. So at first, in any ketogenic plan, I recommend a lot more fat. And then as you do the program, if you want to speed up your fat loss, maybe you don't. Maybe you just want it, you're happy with your results. But if you wanted to speed up your results, uh, maybe you cut down your fat a little bit and just consume the fat that is normally within the ketogenic plan, not by adding more fat. I have worked with a lot of people out there and and certain people that are plateaued, all we do is cut out the bulletproof coffee and presto, they lose more weight. All right, what about the pre-workout drinks? You have energy drinks, you have sport drinks, you have electrolyte drinks like Gatorade, things like that. All of these have sugar and I would avoid them. Now on the flip side, since we're talking about electrolytes, um, if you're consuming an electrolyte powder that doesn't have sugar, okay, maybe it has stevia, um, that's totally okay. But I'm going to just mention one thing. I do have my own electrolyte powder. And uh, presently, I'm trying to find a manufacturing company in Europe to produce 
the same formula that I have in America because that way the shipping cost will be less. And what I'm finding out is something fascinating. It's almost impossible to find a flavoring company that doesn't add maltodextrin, which is the worst sugar you can consume. Okay, It's like way, way higher than actual glucose on the glycemic index. Okay, So they put this hidden um, powder as a drying or spraying agent uh, in flavorings, as well as in the uh, some of the vitamins as they make the citrates. And so even a lot of the copycats from my electrolyte powder, and there's probably five of them out there, probably are using the cheaper version, which have this extra maltodextrin, which I am very much against because that right there can prevent you from getting good results. But it's interesting because if you want a natural flavoring that doesn't have something, or you want a vitamin combination that doesn't have these extra bad things, you have to pay a lot more, unfortunately. All right, the next one on the list is uh, consuming soda with artificial sweeteners, okay? Um, avoid that. Even though it doesn't have sugar in it, it has um, artificial chemicals that interrupt the microbiome in your gut that can indirectly cause problems with your insulin levels, okay? So I've done videos on that, but just avoid the artificial uh, sodas. Instead, you can consume the sodas with stevia or some of the sugar alcohols that um, are like xylitol, erythritol, things like uh, stevia or monk fruit. Those are fine. Just make sure they don't add anything else to it, like dextrin or maltodextrin. Now, let's talk about alcohol for a second. Um, there are certain types of alcohol that have no carbohydrates in them, right? But alcohol is unique in itself in that your liver will take it as a priority, as a toxin, as a poison, and have to break it down. In that breakdown process, okay, there's several steps that happen in the liver and create other problems with your blood sugars and even cause a fatty liver. So that being said, there are levels of things that are bad for your body, right? You have like very high potent alcohol type drinks, right? Well, that's going to create a lot of damage. Then you have other drinks that are lower in alcohol, okay? but also have sugar in them like beer or sweetened um, like margaritas, for example. Well, you obviously those are a given, avoid those. But what about the wines, okay? There are certain wines that are really dry, less sweet, and they also have less alcohol. Well, I'm gonna put those right in the center. I'm not gonna recommend them, but if you have them occasionally, uh, maybe it's gonna create a small effect and not a major effect like some of the other alcoholic beverages. Now, personally, I don't drink any alcohol. I don't do well with it unless uh, I'm really stressed out or on the weekends, maybe I'll do a six pack and I'm being very sarcastic. All right, what about these soy drinks like um, the soy milk, for example? It's just bizarre to me that they turned this bean into a milk, right? I mean, there's no milk in a bean. So that soy drink, I would avoid it. And I would also avoid the almond milk However, there are certain types of almond milk um, that do have just almonds with water and that's it, right? Others have a lot of additional things in them. So maybe those are okay in small amounts, but one drink of almond milk has like 30 calories. So now we're dealing with more calories. Um, it's not a lot, but it's a factor to look at. So if you had a choice between almond milk and soy milk, of course, I would do the almond milk first because there's a lot of problems with soy, but I'm going to put almond milk right in the middle and it really depends on the ingredients. So go ahead and read those because a lot of times they will put a lot of other things in there. And even the unsweetened almond milk might have some other things that you don't want. All right, what about milk? Well, there is um, some sugar in milk. So I would avoid that. And because we're on the topic of dairy, realize that when you ferment milk, you get cheese, kefir, things like that. And so what those bacteria are doing to the milk, they're eating up all the sugar, right? So cheese is very, very low in lactose, right? In fact, I don't even think it has any lactose or milk sugar in cheese. And of course, if you have a raw cheese from Europe, uh, you have the benefit of the microbes, the protein without the sugar. But I will say that yogurt does have more sugar than kefir. And so kefir is a lot better too, because it has uh, friendly yeast and friendly bacteria and a lot more than yogurt. So if you had the choice between yogurt and kefir, I would go with the kefir. 
but make sure it's plain. Now, what about uh, like these hot beverages with bouillon cubes, right? Uh, some people recommend them, but the problem is trying to find a bouillon cube without maltodextrin or monosodium glutamate or modified food starch, which is monosodium glutamate. So if you can find one, great, uh, because it gives you that extra salt that you need. But if it has the MSG or maltodextrin, I would avoid it. All right. So what can you drink then, right? When you're fasting, uh, you can drink water, right? Spring water, filtered water would be great. You can do carbonated water or still water. You can add electrolytes. You can add apple cider vinegar. It's not going to be a problem. In fact, I do recommend adding lemon or lime and apple cider vinegar. You can take supplements when you're fasting. That's totally fine. Just make sure they're not like protein powder type things. But I do recommend taking supplements. Uh, there's very little calories in supplements. That's why you can take them. Tea is very good to take, like green tea, other types of tea when you're fasting and will help you fast. And black coffee would be the ideal situation. But you, again, you can add some cream or half and half. I do. And I don't consider it a big problem. But for those people that uh, want to be strict because they have a very uh, stubborn metabolism, well, they might just want to do it without any extra things. And one last point I want to bring up, um, when you're doing fasting, especially prolonged fasting, don't forget about sea salt. You need about a level teaspoon as, as a minimum in your water, right? Because you're not eating food. So you want to kind of mix that in these drinks, whether you're doing electrolyte powder or just straight water throughout the day, kind of spread it out um, because that's very, very important. Because if you run out of sodium and chloride, uh, your muscles get weak, you feel fatigued, and there's a lot of problems with that. Now, since we're on the topic of fasting and liquids, if you haven't seen this video on my lemon and apple cider vinegar drink, you should check that out. I put it up right here.